Hello and welcome to Mint's weekly corporate roundup. This week saw some controversies in the Indian corporate sector along with management changes at one of the leading hotel chains, the Indian Hotels and Company, which is owned by the Tata Group. And we have PR Sanjay with us who will tell us about the change. Uh, so Sanjay, we saw Rakesh Sarna come in as a new MD and the uh, and Raymond Bixen stepped out. What does this mean for the company and why now? Uh, see, this has been seen as a very strategic move by, or maybe like the first great move by uh, the sixth Tata Group chairman, Cyrus Mistry, bringing in a, a talent from Hyatt uh, Corporation. Uh, so, and of course, it is like a bit unexpected where uh, Raymond Bixen stepping down uh, for to pursue his own other personal interests. But uh, the key thing here is like uh, Rakesh Sarna will have to. Uh, continue the momentum and we understand that uh, the uh, hotel group is in the path of consolidation where it will actually bring down a lot of own asset and it will become asset light and uh, he uh, Bixen for that matter he has already created a lot of uh, you know upscale mid market and budget uh, you know uh, segment of hotels where now he, it is to remain the, those kind of things and to sustain into profitability is going to be the big task for uh, Sarna and then for the mystery he'll have to prove that his uh, choice is right. Thanks, Sanjay. Hopefully, uh, the new person uh, joining Indian Hotels will take it through the path of profitability. Uh, in another development, we had two Indian companies, uh, Prakash Industries and Bhushan Steel, embroiled in a controversy about a bribery case at Syndicate Bank. Uh, we have uh, Vishwanath Nair with us. Uh, Vishwanath, can you tell us what exactly happened at Syndicate Bank? Right. Uh, so last week, at the end of last week, uh, the uh, chairman and managing director of Syndicate Bank was arrested uh, on an alleged uh, bribery scam. Uh, along with him, uh, two other people, which is uh, the chairman and managing director of Prakash Industries, Mr. Ved Prakash Agarwal, and the uh, vice chairman and managing director at uh, Bhushan Steels, Neerat Singhal, have also been arrested, along with a couple of other people. So uh, the investigation goes into uh, uh, the Central Bureau of Investigation, uh, which is conducting these investigations, has arrested these people on, on an alleged bribery scam relating to some rupees 50 lakh or uh, another amount, which has been paid to uh, the bank's chair for uh, clearing some loans uh, to companies which are which have not paid back their previous loans. Now, both the companies, uh, Bhushan Seal and Prakash Industries, have both put out statements on the uh, Bombay Stock Exchange saying that uh, they are denying these allegations and that uh, Prakash Industries, which put out the statement last night, had claimed that the company and its chairman have been wrongly uh, embroiled in this mess. Uh, and uh, as of now, the investigation stands and we don't know what uh, it's going to turn out to be. But uh, we'll see what works out. Thanks, Vishwanath. Uh, looks like this is going to be an interesting uh, case to follow. Uh, moving to the tech space, it had some exciting news. Uh, India, a company founded by two Indians, Micromax, has reportedly surpassed Samsung. And uh, we have a technology editor, Leslie DeMonte, with us. Uh, Leslie, what's the story with Micromax? Ah, that's a good question. So this is the story. This is a Micromax and this is a Samsung. So you have two phones. Both look very similar. Five years back, your Micromax was nowhere in the reckoning, perhaps in the bottom five. And suddenly you find that the market leader Samsung has been threatened by, uh, its position has been threatened by uh, Micromax. Micromax is number one. But, of course, the numbers are being disputed at this point in time because the numbers were put out by a research firm called Counterpoint from Hong Kong. A uh, few people have heard about it at this point in time. We are awaiting numbers from IDC, from um, uh, Convergence Catalyst and uh, other such research firms to endorse that or say but nevertheless even if you do not look at the numbers um, Microsoft uh, Micromax anyway is number two and it is fast catching up with uh, Samsung uh, in even in the smartphone segment so currently when we say that Micromax is number one it is number one in the entire handsets business according to counterpoint in the smartphone um, uh, segment um, a Samsung share is still about 25%. Uh, Micromax, I think they have given something like 19.1%. Uh, smartphone segment is a rapidly growing segment. But here, the major point, as I showed you these kind of two phones, uh, most people would say, okay, fine, that Samsung has got a, a, maybe a Gorilla Glass, uh, high-definition uh, HD kind of video. Uh, then it would have other kind of high-end features. Um, Perhaps they would say that Micromax at that price point does not have it. But most of the Indian consumers that we had spoken to, uh, they really don't care much about this. They say, okay, fine, if we get 
uh, a five inch kind of phone which uh, performs decently with a very high end proce uh, processor good features etc and we get it at a price point of say 50 uh, less than 10000 that's a sweet spot for most indian consumers and that i believe with a strong distribution network with a strong sales network uh, and basically the point that it's a homegrown a person uh, Micromax is making waves. Of course, the point remains that there are Chinese players like uh, Xiaomi, uh, Gioni, etc. Uh, they are also fast catching up with, in fact, Xiaomi has overtaken Samsung in China. Uh, Xiaomi has entered India, created waves. It's MI3 sold on Flipkart like hotcakes. Uh, so Micromax perhaps would not only have to watch its tail, I cannot rest on past laurels. So let's see. Thank you, Leslie. Looks like uh, there's going to be an interesting war amongst these mobile companies to see who is at the top. Uh, please keep uh, tuned to www.lifemint.com to know more such updates. Thank you.